Sophia is one of an estimated 7 million Australians who've used Buy Now Pay Later products. It allowed her to buy items immediately and pay them off in instalments. But after racking up a small debt, she says it can be dangerous. There was no credit check performed or anything like that. And there was also nothing stopping me from going up and signing up with another provider. Buy Now Pay Later providers will soon be required to hold an Australian credit licence. They'll carry out more affordability checks on customers and won't be allowed to raise spending limits without permission. Consumers will also be offered hardship provisions and better complaint processes, including caps on fees charged for missed and late payments. The most important thing is ensuring that providers are going to have to comply with the responsible lending obligations that is, suitability and affordability checks will have to be put in place. The Minister considered three options to regulate the industry. He chose the middle ground, limited regulation under the Credit Act, providing more consumer protections without stopping people accessing the products. Some of these products are aimed at you know, small-scale purchases, people spending 150 bucks on a pair of jeans, and others within the BNPL market are looking at you know significant purchases like fifteen twenty thousand dollars for new solar systems it's not all the same level of risk so we want to ensure that the regulation meets the risk involved great news thanks what we need Thank but you. consumer groups fear loopholes will still leave people in trouble the biggest concern that financial counselors will have is that the modified responsible lending obligations won't go far enough and so the core problem with this product is people getting in over their heads. And so we're really worried that the legislation may not address that problem. The biggest industry players, Afterpay and Zip, have welcomed the proposed laws and some even think they could pick up market share. It really does uh, lift the bar in terms of minimum standards uh, and expectations across the broader industry so that it does provide a level of transparency and confidence uh, for all industry stakeholders. But more stringent rules may not be a win for all businesses. While the main players in the sector have been growing their customer base, they've been operating at a loss and rising interest rates are also making life tougher. Now, with new regulations in Australia and the UK, the future could be even more uncertain. I think there will be more consolidation in the industry. We will likely see that the smaller players struggle to keep up with the regulatory storm, whereas big players will still be able to survive this storm because of their existing merchant network and a large consumer base. Sophia is pleased that more protections are being put in place. I'd really like to see some real clarity around that and some more disclaimers to make it really obvious to consumers, some who might be young and vulnerable people who don't quite understand, making that really clear that it is a form of credit. But Sophia and many others will have to wait until the end of the year when laws are expected to be put in place. Nassim Hadem there. Well, Roger Montgomery from Montgomery Invest says buy now pay later business models have always worked on a slim margin and the proposed legislation will squeeze those even further. Roger, what will this proposed legislation have on buy now pay later operators and their business models which work on pretty small margins as it is anyway? Well, not much change to business as usual, really. What this legislation or proposed legislation does is just finds the middle ground between self-regulation and consumer convenience and choice. And I think it does a good job of that. But the businesses were mediocre businesses before all of this anyway. Mm. And how did their margins work? They were kind of on two, two and a half percent margins yeah, anyway. Look, they were dressed up as something transformative, but really all they've ever been is a factoring business. Uh, they, they essentially buy the debtors from retailers and then collect what's owed from the consumer. Uh, those businesses for a very long time have been low margin businesses in the order of two or two and a half percent. And what made these particular businesses exciting was the, the very short term nature of the, the credit that was provided, which meant they could recycle that two and a half percent many times through a year, which would artificially raise the return on their equity. Um, but, but as soon as you end up in a situation where either consumer sales slow down or interest rates go up, you end up in a very, very tight jaws 
uh, and that reduces the margin of these businesses and makes them quite vulnerable. So if it is a business as usual because this proposed regulation has some carve-outs there, it doesn't have the potential to crimp growth in these businesses? Of course it does because if there's any, any additional costs that have to be borne by these businesses on top of the very skinny margins that they're earning, uh, then all that does is make them less uh, less attractive and more mediocre. Um, credit always is like water. It always finds the lowest point. When interest rates are really low, then the floodgates are open and, and an oasis forms around these businesses or for these businesses. But as soon as interest rates go up, those floodgates close and what was once an oasis becomes a desert. From an investment point of view, how have you historically valued stocks in the buy now, pay later sector? We thought these businesses had crazy valuations. Uh, we looked silly when they were going up, obviously, and they went up multiple times. Uh, but because of the low margins of these businesses and the very important fact that they really can't grow their book unless they raise money, either equity or debt, which either increases the risk or dilutes your ownership, they become unattractive. To put their valuations in perspective, you know, at one point, Afterpay had a valuation of $26 billion, which was 25% more than Coles. But even though Coles had $37 billion of revenue, Afterpay had $230 million of revenue. Mm. So it was a fraction of the size in terms of the operating business, but it was a, had a greater market cap. That was clearly never going to be sustainable. So then what do you see as future earnings for these companies, given this proposed legislation, the added complexity it puts on these business models? Eventually they'll mature, they'll reach their ceiling, they'll get into a position where they're just churning through customers. There's an increasing number of competitors as well. Uh, and ultimately they'll be pro-cyclical businesses. They'll just be businesses that go up and down with the consumer. What do you see as the greatest challenge to the business, uh, particularly when you look through um, the RBA declaring the sector exempt from these surcharges, forcing customers essentially to pick up the cost and not the, um, not the retailers? Do you see that as where the real risk comes from? It's one of them. But the other risk is just the increasing competition and, and the choice that consumers have. Um, at, once consumers become a certain age, uh, they start wanting to actually use more credible solutions to their purchasing. Uh, and that's probably the biggest risk. It's an age, an age issue. Roger Montgomery, thank you very much. It's a pleasure.